Hi there, welcome to um, Intermediate Fiddle Lesson number five. Today's lesson, going to be dealing with the key of A, also going to be looking at grace notes, giving you some examples, also going to introduce you to a tune in the key of A, as well as add a few further double stop type chords. So we're going to be covering things that we've looked at before, but we're going to also include them all, wrap the whole thing up in the key of A with a sample tune, which includes all those, as, those things as well. Of course, there is a downloadable worksheet and there's a link below in the description for this video. OK, the key of A. Now you start off, let's start off on the G string first note. That's the A. OK, then you work your way up. That's a C sharp. And that's in the sharpened position. Then we go to the open D. E, F. Now we have this um, sharpened note, which would normally be a G. And it's actually a G sharp. But... It's generally called A flat. The reason for that is because when you look at the way this octave is divided up into notes, it doesn't quite mathematically work out. The G sharp is not exactly the same as the A flat, but for all intents and purposes, it sounds the same. So rather than calling it G sharp, I'll call it from A flat from now on. A flat, now A, B, C sharp, and then D, E, F sharp, A flat, A, key of A. practicing. Moving on, simple tune. You'll see that coming up on the screen now. Um, I'll play the tune for you. Comprises of crotchets, quavers and a semi-breathe. Okay, let's go up and play by starting on the A on the A string. starting from the bottom and then we'll play it once and then we'll move on to the A string and play it again. So three, four. Repeat. Now, 
I'm going to introduce you to a tune which gives good examples of the things I mentioned earlier. The grace notes, the very simple type of bowing. It's, it's not full double shuffle bowing, but it's similar. It's a sort of, sort of semi, semi shuffle bowing, for want of a better word. It basically is an easy introduction into that style of bowing. And it also, this tune also includes some nice double stop um, in there as well. So basically it's a good tune to, to try. It's a hornpipe style of tune. And in the UK at Cayley's, hornpipes are not played too quickly. They're sort of quite bouncy, rhythmical, because the steps for the dancers are quite intricate. They, um, they have to sort of move their feet around quite a bit. So um, you can't play them too quickly, basically, but you have to be very bouncy and rhythmical with them. Um, so this tune, um, it starts off with a triplet. In other words, that's three short notes which are played in the same space of time as a crotchet. And it sounds like this. Okay. Now those are the leading notes. And then we have three measures. And then the fourth measure, you'll notice there's a sort of bracket above it with the number one. Now what that means is you get to that fourth bracket, you get to that fourth measure, and then that you play that and then go back to the beginning. It's a repeat. It tells you to go back to the beginning. And you go back to the beginning, you play the three measures again, and then you jump over that fourth measure and you play the, the last, the remaining measure, which has got the number two written above it. So it's basically like a shorthand technique for, for abbreviating notation so it doesn't become too long. You'll follow it as I go along. I'll play the tune anyway. Three, four. and straightforward nice and what we call lumpy in the UK it's a lumpy kind of tune that's how I describe a hornpipe anyway so let's have a look at it we're going to start off with those pickup notes those three and then go on to the play the A A flat, now repeat, Okay, let's pick up the speed. Three, four. Okie doke. Now, those pickup notes, that triplet, I would suggest you play that with one bow stroke. Noticed when I played the tune the second time, um, having passed the first time measure and gone back to the beginning and played it again, that second time, instead of going on a down bow for that triplet, I ended up on an up bow. So that's something else worth practicing. Now 
on both the down bow and an up bow. It's, it's very important because sometimes you don't always finish neatly so that when you start a phrase again, you're on a down bow. Sometimes you have to start on the up bow. So the best thing is to, is to force yourself into playing um, in, in, in an, odd, an odd way, really, because it's not the natural way to play. You would naturally just go for a down bow. But try and force yourself into an up bow every now and then. OK, so moving on. Now the B section of this tune includes some double stop type cross bowing. Now what I mean by that is this. Let me just show you what I did there. First of all in the first measure I held my middle finger on the second note of the A string um, <clears throat> which is a C sharp and, and I brought my first finger down on the E string onto the first note which is an F sharp. You're sort of doing a rolling motion with your arm. Okay, that's the first measure. The second measure, I've got my ring finger down on the third note of the A string. That's the D. And I'm then bringing down my... I'm playing this. I've got my first finger on the first note of the E string, which is the F sharp. Then I bring down my middle finger onto the G natural. So it sounds like this. That's measure two. And measure three, I'm going to put my first finger on the B of the A string, which is the first note, that one. And I'm going to um, then, I'm going to then put my middle finger on the second note of the, uh, of the E string, which is now the A flat. Those are the two notes, and I'm going to bring my ring finger down on the E string, third note, onto the A. So, and then it finishes on the first repeat, and then we play it again. Second measure, third measure, and then we go to the second time repeat time bar, I'll play the whole lot through now, nice and slowly, three, four. Pick up the pace, three, four.
Okay, let's play it from the very start of the tune now. So we'll go through the whole lot. <clears throat> so that will mean that we play one, two, three, four, sixteen measures in total. That's the A and the B. One. I hope you're keeping up okay. One, two, three, four. Top again, three, four. Right, now, go and have a cup of coffee, or go and have a cup of tea, take five, because that's quite difficult, what we've just been playing, but it's worth knowing about, and it's worth following through. You've also got the musical notation, so you've got something to, to follow and, and read, and see exactly um, how, how, the, how the notes are structured, but... That's just basically a nice straightforward example of some interesting bowing. It's not quite double shuffle bowing, but it's a kind of cross bowing technique. So it's very common in a lot of tunes, certainly in Celtic Irish tunes, you come across that in a lot of tunes. So it's worth it's worth practicing and getting it right. Moving on, grace notes. Now I've given you, I'm just going to show you three examples. There are lots, but I'm just going to show you three that we can include in this tune. Um, the first one, um, you, you can see on the screen now an, an example of three grace notes. Now the way they look in notation, they're, they're more, sort of miniaturized. The notes look smaller. You can see the way that they're written there and there's a sort of a curved bracket thing underneath that kind of joins up to the main note. Now it's nothing to worry about because all it means is we just play those two smaller notes very quickly. So looking at that first measure there, um, the note is C. Um, it's C sharp. And um, I can see the two smaller notes, the two small grace notes, are a C sharp and a D. And then it goes back to the C sharp, which is the main crotchet note. So what it means basically you have to do, you have to go... In other words, you play the first two notes really quickly. And the crotchet is held for obviously a slightly longer period of time. Try and get faster if you can. It's not this, it don't, you, you really, you can start slowly like this. But you want to try and get into a habit of almost flicking down on the note. So sometimes it's so fast you can you can you can't see it, the camera won't pick it up, but the ear does. So you, you really do have to, to get that to be lightning fast. Um, the next grace note is the one that you can see um, which is the B. 
It's the same principle. This time I'm just going up to the C sharp. Practice, practice, practice that. Spend about, <clears throat> well, spend some time on, in your um, practice sessions just, just trying out these grace notes and trying to get the speed up. And then finally, in the last measure, the, there's a nice little roll. It goes from a B to a C sharp, back to a B, to an A, and then back to the B again. Okay, now obviously don't spend hours practicing these grace notes. It's best to introduce them into tunes. And then try and um, try and improve upon them when you're playing a tune, which is why I've included some grace notes now into this tune we've just been playing. And you can see measure two, there's a grace note. Measure three, there's a grace note. And the first time bar repeat, time measure repeat. There are two grace notes. So let's take a listen to what this tune sounds like, played not too quickly with these grace notes added in. Three, four. Repeat it, three, four. Now the B section, three, four. So that's a good example of grace notes being added to a tune um, to give it a little bit more colour and a little bit more rhythm as well. Now I haven't really pushed on the bowing too much today because I think there's loads that we've covered that uh, are quite complex. In fact the cross bowing I think will be the one that will probably take most of your time in developing. Um, but as I say, it is an important style of bowing, particularly in Celtic, Irish Celtic fiddle music, Scottish fiddle music, because um, it crops up in loads of different tradi traditional tunes. So the cross bowing is really, really an important one. Um, just go through the whole tune again. I'll just play at a slightly brisker pace now. Three, four.
I think that will do for today's lesson. I hope that's been useful for you. I tried to cover a different style of a genre of music today. Um, this is this is perhaps closer to what you might hear in the northeast of England, in uh, Newcastle, Durham. Um, in those areas of the northeast, you would definitely hear this because the influence of the Northumbrian pipes comes in, and that that definitely influences the way that people play and write tunes in that area. So um, that's what I've tried to do today and it's more or less a hornpipe style of tune which is why it doesn't go lightning fast. It has to be quite sort of bouncy and rhythmical which I think adds to the appeal. Anyway it's one of my own this tune. I, I composed it earlier on specifically for this lesson so I hope you've enjoyed it. And once again, thanks for watching these, this series of videos. I hope they're useful. Please download the sheet music and print it out or use a PDF or whatever. And have fun with your fiddle playing. Okay, bye for now.